Again, uh, what we're doing here, this is essentially kind of the, the, you know, the third real lecture, if you will. And uh, so we've gone through kind of the, you know, the, the basic postulates of relativity. And then we've um, looked at, if you follow those basic postulates, there's a couple, you know, uh, thought experiments that we did. And some of those thought experiments kind of gave us a bit of a weird result that, that we made some assumptions that turns out that if you, if you make normal everyday assumptions, you end up with these, you know, weird paradoxes that seem to disobey reality. All right, so um, we, we, we saw a couple paradoxes or, or a couple, you know, troublesome, you know, uh, conceptual ideas. And turns out that if we're looking at the world the way that Galileo and the way that Newton did, uh, some of our basic assumptions about how the universe works are just flat out wrong. And namely, as we saw, that if even with the most basic examples for, you know, for relativity, um, even if we, we make what we think are reasonable assumptions, you end up finding that experimentally, um, we don't... The, the, the laws of Newton completely disobey Einstein's postulates. So long story short, number one, you have to recognize that time is no longer a universal constant. The time that you experience very well may be different than the time that anyone else in the universe experiences. And that's kind of the, the, the most revolutionary kind of conceptual leap, leap that Einstein made. And what we're going to see here is an example of not only time is stretched or, or, or compressed, but also lengths, lengths or distances are, are, are stretched or compressed, depending on your motion. So, you know, strange thing number two, that not only is our watch gonna read differently, but our, our measuring sticks are all different. You know, it's kind of like, there's millions of people throughout the universe, everyone with their own unique measuring stick that are all different lengths, and none of them are any more correct than any other. You know, so it's kind of making, talking about, um, you know, talking about distances and measurements almost impossible, because if we're all using different length measuring sticks, and if our watches all go at different rates, how can you actually uh, communicate and send information from person A to, to person B? So do, do you guys see what kind of the problem, where, where the problem lies here? And so what we're gonna talk about after that though, once we see that time and distances are stretched, we're gonna consider, okay, what things don't change? What are what we call the universal invariants or the relativistic invariant quantities? And this is going to be a really important focus for, for a lot of the rest of relativity here. And then if we have time, uh, we're going to introduce velocity transformations. So how can you calculate how fast, let's say, the, a moving spaceship would see your pizza delivery guy moving? Um, so if you have like two different uh, observers measuring someone else's velocity, how, how can the two observers find a way to agree on that person's velocity if they each see it to be different? So again, we're, we're going to go through each of these uh, in a little more depth here, but that's kind of the order of order of operations here for today.